Coach Mike Schmidt, he's an alum. I know a lot of you in here know him. Um, he took a chance on me. I've been a graduate assistant my whole life uh, until this point this year. I was at Minnesota Duluth for two years, and I was at Northern Illinois for three uh, as a graduate assistant. So this year is my first full-time job. Um, at 28 years old, I'm very thankful for him to uh, take a chance um, on me. This, uh, this is some of the stats from this year compared to last year. Why I got this up here, uh, just going to hit on that our football players at UWL, our average ACT on offense is a 26. Um, and I, I really believe how they bought into what we were trying to do in our first year in the offensive scheme was it's very easy for them because of how intelligent they are. Um, they have brand new formations, code words, signals, the whole deal. Um, and we were able to have a lot of success this year. Um, because of them. The two big ones for me are the points per game. Uh, we were third in the league. We averaged 36 points a game, uh, up 21 points from the year before, and then third down, we are actually second in the conference at 50%. Uh, I know all you guys in here know how important that is to stay on the field, to move the chains. Uh, that was a big, big piece um, for us. Can I get into some of the things about a quarterback real quick before we get into the film of kind of what I'll look for and what we want at UWL? Uh, the biggest thing for me is I want a guy that's going to be himself, not be somebody that he's not. Uh, I can't ask a guy to lead a team if he's going to act how I want him to act rather than how he should. Um, I think the most difficult one is the second one, is trying to be the same person every day uh, to be positive. I know that's pretty damn tough, especially when you're a college kid and you got a lot going on in your life. Um, I know that that's a hard one to hit on and to hold them to. Why not? I want them to have swagger to themselves and 100% confidence in everything they're doing. Uh, just because if they don't answer a question with 100% confidence, how do I know that they fully grasp with what I'm saying? Uh, and I always tell them when a coach wants to me this volume reflects confidence. If they're going to say something with a question mark on the end of it, um, how do I really know that they're fully grasping what I'm saying? Last one. Um, Love to compete. I know a lot of you guys, you got kids that play three sports, um, and they just learn that through playing a lot of different sports. I know I learned that as, as a kid. Um, but I want a quarterback that's going to compete that, at everything he's doing. And things that we'll do to implement that into our practice, um, our quarterbacks and individual drills, no matter what drill we're doing, there's some type of competition included in it, and there's a winner and a loser. Our guys get mad at me all the time, roll their eyes. I always say not everybody gets a trophy, not everybody gets a ribbon. Um, and guys will have to do push-ups, up-downs, uh, whatever, sit-ups, if, if they don't win. Next thing, hopping into it here, um, is a film, film junkie, film rat. Um, I know you guys know this, everybody's got huddle now that you can hold your guys accountable to make sure that they're watching film, but um, we make our practices, which I'll get into in a little bit, pretty unrealistic with how fast we're going to go, um, and I want the game to slow down for the quarterback position, and how we can do that is to make sure that they're watching enough film throughout the week. Now, uh, I try not to but I ended up doing it, uh, going on and watching how much film guys watch. I know you guys probably all know you can do that in Huddle, you can monitor how much film they watch, uh, but it's pretty impressive some of the film that our quarterbacks are watching this year, especially our starter who ended up having a lot of success. But I want them at the quarterback position, in my opinion, to be a student of the game. So when I implement any sort of run play, any concept, I want them to know the full scheme of what we're, we're putting in. We're, we're putting in power. I want them to know what the left tackle's doing, what the left guard's doing, you name it. Especially in protection, because I know you guys don't know this, but when the left tackle gives up a sack and your quarterback gets pissed off, he's got to know whether the tackle was right or he's wrong um, in giving up that sack. This one was given to me by uh, Rob Bollinger when I was a kid. Uh, ask questions, no questions, a dumb question. Um, and, you know, if you guys got questions in here, please stop me. But I want, especially our freshmen and our sophomores, to raise their hand, whether it's the most simple thing out there, to ask a question. Because if they don't know what's going on, um, it's going to show once we get out on the field. 
and that leads into this. You're a reflection of my coaching on the field, and we need to be on the same page. I think that was a big thing for me and Tark Yagi is from Watertown. He's our quarterback. He'll be back next year. We were on the same page a lot this year, and he made me look pretty good. Um, you know, and that's that's a big piece of it to make sure that you and your quarterback um, are on the same page, and you know what you're thinking, and that's just through his film study along with your meetings with him. Hopefully, you guys, can you guys all see that in the back? Um, this is this is going to be a little bit about our offensive operation. For some of you that don't know, we're a no huddle, up tempo offense. We're going to try and go as fast as we possibly can. And we're also going to be pretty multiple in what we do. Um, but this is the first three things that I always want our quarterbacks to know and to understand. Before we can move into any concept, before our lead and teach them any play, is that they need to know the signals. If they don't know the signals, because we're going to signal the play from the sidelines, if they don't know the signals, they can't relay the play to anybody else because they don't know what it means. And then basically, one, one B right here is the formations. If we have a kid that's not lined up right and our quarterback doesn't line them up pr properly, I blame the quarterback. Um, nothing frustrates me more when we're, the Z's in, supposed to be in motion and they look over to the left and the X is over there. That just shows me that he doesn't, doesn't know our formations. Um, and then next is the code words. Code words being what we're going to relay to the whole line uh, to what the play is because they don't get the signal. They rely on the quarterback to tell them what the play is. Um, next couple things here at the bottom is uh, when I was going through the interview process with Coach Schmidt, uh, to go to a no huddle offense, you really have to buy into it in terms of your practice. And just because how, how fast you're going to go on offense in a 15 uh, minute uh, team session, we script over 36 plays. And we get them all run and we go violently fast. It's, like I told you before, we try to make it pretty unrealistic in practice. Um, to make sure that we're getting a ton of reps. But that means that we have to have all of our players, not just our skill guys, in shape. Nothing frustrates me more as a coach when our whole line is at the line of scrimmage with their hands on their knees. Uh, we won't allow that to happen uh, just because if we're trying to use that to our advantage and our guys can't do it, then we're, uh, we're not going to be utilizing our tempo to what we need. Another thing that we do, uh, this stems back to when I played quarterback in North Dakota. I swear I was the only guy, uh, along with the backup, my buddy, um, that gained weight in fall camp. Because um, we didn't condition and we ate a ton at the dorm. But um, we'll condition in our individual time with the quarterbacks. We'll be doing individual and then we'll just hop hop to the sidelines and do a quick gasser, and I'll do them with them. Uh, it gives me my workout for the week. Um, and that, that's a way to keep, keep them in shape to make sure um, they're on board with what we're doing. Uh, next, this is kind of in terms of our practice and how we need to operate our practice. Cool thing um, that we started doing when we first started this is we don't stop the film sometimes in practice. And why we do that is if we're trying to go as fast as we can and we're not running as many plays as we should, well, there's a reason, and we need to find that reason. And you can show guys on film how fast they're not getting back. If your tackle's walking to the line of scrimmage or your wide receiver's you know, walking slash jogging back, you can see that when you don't stop the film between plays. Next, uh, this, is, this is a big one that we implemented, um, our spotters. We'll wear jerseys in practice, or excuse me, a referee jersey in practice. And why we do that is because we want them to always bring the ball back to the center of the field. And there will be a clip here in a second, you'll see why we believe that's so important. But the quicker you can get the ball to the center of the field, um, the quicker you can run plays. And I know that sounds very simple, but we'll teach our guys that they catch the ball out of bounds, not to hand it to that official. They're, they're taught to run it into the middle to bring it to the, I believe it's the umpire, inside. Um, and, and that way we can continue to go faster and faster as we go. And then the next one, that when they're getting a signal, they're running and looking at the same time to get to the line of scrimmage while getting the signal to make sure here again that, that we're going fast.
first or not the seekers or age back to the guys who are just <coughs> right, will they be looking at the signal of their post on screen? Yep. So this, this is a clip uh, we'll, we'll show our guys every year. So you can see there's 17 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Colorado gets tackled inbounds. He throws the ball to that, that official there. And you can see the melee that ends up happening here and they end up not even getting another play off. Um, and that, that's what we always show our guys. Um, just when I first got there, showed them that clip, and then also prior to fall camp, we showed them that clip to show them the importance of always getting the football, running it into the to the near official, rather than handing it to the outside guy where that could happen, where it ends up getting blocked um, from from one official to the next, to make sure that we're going to get as many possible reps as we can. Um, this, this is going to talk about the benefits of our personnel groupings and how we can be multiple in what we're doing. This year, our first year of the game against Luther College, we rushed the ball 45 times in one game. And then our last game against UW Platteville, we threw it for a school record 66 times. Um, and it's just based on what, what we're doing and how multiple we can be. And there again, that stems back to our guys are able to um, utilize their knowledge and their smarts of picking up what we're trying to do. But the benefits is <clears throat> that we're not going to sub. And when you don't sub, the defense can't sub. And that goes into our conditioning and practice. And then it also allows us, a lot of the time, we'll be in 11 personnel. Um, and what we're going to use there is 10 personnel formations. We'll get in a 2x2 two two or a 3x1 um, and not take our tight end off the field. And to a D coordinator, he doesn't know if we're going to line up in a pro set or if we're going to line up in a, what we call a 10 personnel formation. And that's going to make it difficult on them when we have a kid out there that we know can do both. Um, in our personnel groupings, we have a really good slot receiver. He's a basketball player, Ryan Cruiser. Um, he's a, he came out this year when Coach Schmidt got the job. Another guy I'm pretty thankful that came out to play football, to be honest with you. Um, and we have a, a way, you know, in, in our 11 personnel, we have three different personnel groupings to put Cruiser at different positions um, to get him the football in different ways on the edge or in the slot, however you want to do it. And then, like I said, it just is a way to get your players in different spots to allow them, you know, I, a lot of you guys have really good football players in your program. Everybody has one in particular that you want to get the football. Well, this is a way um, to ensure you can get them the ball. That's right, and right there. Um, this is our tempos and the different tempos that we utilize. Our normal tempo is what I've been talking about, is how we just want to go fast. There's a code word, uh, and then a cadence involved with it. Uh, and then there's our two minute tempo. And our two minute tempo, what that's gonna be is we're gonna stay in the same formation. It's just gonna flip based on the hash. So if it's a three by one formation and the ball's on the left hash, the strength's to the right. If the ball goes to the other half, the formation flips, and our guys know that. Um, and here again, you only say the code word one time and set up. It's a way to go faster um, and to not really slow down. Excuse me. I would highly suggest this next one. This is one thing that we utilize at uh, Northern Illinois a ton. Uh, it's a one word play. And what that means is it literally means everything. So fruit and apple, if you were to ask any one of our football players, fruit and apple, they know the formation, they know the motion, they know the play, they know every part of it, and you build this in from the beginning of August. When we were at Northern Illinois, we had 42 of these. Now that's a crazy amount because it's been built into the program for so long, but at UWL right now, we have three of them. Um, and it's literally one signal, and everybody on the sidelines yelling it out, and it's, it's very cool to see them retain that information and how fast we're able to go with it. Um, but, you know, we used this, uh, I believe, three times this season. And it was to our advantage. We used it after a big play this year on a big pass play. We yelled it out. We were in that personnel. And off we went. And then we're also able to use it uh, in a third down scenario where we had a big play on second down as well. Um, to use that, like I said, just yelling one word. And they, they know it because it's been ingrained in their mind. 
Um, and we don't change, we don't change any part of it. So fruit and apple doesn't, one week is one formation, and then the next week it's a different formation. It's one thing the entire time, the moment you get it installed. Uh, next is our look place. I know a lot of you all do this. Um, whether we're using this to actually look for what the defense has given us or if we're just trying to slow our own tempo down. We can utilize it for both, both situations if we're trying to find out what coverage they're in or if we want to slow ourselves down um, and not have to huddle. This is a way for us to do it. Then another thing, uh, we did this a couple times this year, is the fake look. If you, if you look a lot in a game, we're going to implement this in where all of a sudden it's a, it's a certain word that we say and then it's the code word. They look over, pause for a count, snap the football. In my opinion, that's going to get, if you look enough, the defense is going to start to look to their sidelines to see if the coach is going to adjust their call. Um, and then all of a sudden the ball snap. And hopefully we can utilize um, that to our advantage up front especially. Jet read. Um, th this, this is honestly the biggest piece to our offense. The slot position is one of the key ingredients to um, our success this year. This is Ryan Cruiser. I know I, I talked about him, but you know, I love the kid. He's a, one of the hardest workers we got on the team. Um, and very fortunate to have him come out. But this is a huge part of what we do. And we practice our jet time up every single day in practice. Uh, we, we have an early outs period that's designed for special teams. While any guys that aren't in special teams, we utilize them to um, do the jet time up with the quarterback. And we don't have a coach snapping the football. I'll make our centers come over there and do it with us. Because to me, you need all three of the guys involved. You need the center, you need the quarterback, and then obviously the guy doing the jet um, to work on it. But like I said, the mesh, the mesh point needs to be natural, um, and the snap point is critical. As many as you probably know that run this type of stuff, that we're going to snap the football when he gets to the near tackle. Um, and what that's going to do, that's going to allow um, everything to happen not too fast and not too slow. If they don't, and it's funny to watch that if we're reading the left end and the Jets coming from here and we have a freshman quarterback and he doesn't understand where he needs to snap that yet, he's just going to get smoked in the face because the DN is going to be free coming up the field. So very important that they understand the snap point and how crucial that it is for him. Um, another thing that we'll use, hopefully the, the film will get rolling here, um, that we're going to utilize all of our guys to carry our football with this. We're going to use our X receiver, our Z receiver, our definitely and our slot receiver, and then also get into empty and use our running backs as well um, to utilize all of our guys that are playmakers and get them the football um, with doing this type of stuff. And the last thing, um, our quarterbacks, when we do jet read, they have the opportunity to keep the football. Now, Tark Yagi, if I were to bet, I, we've never timed his 40, but he um, probably runs over a five flat. When I was at Northern Illinois, Drew Hare ran a 499. He rushed for 990 yards. You don't need to be fast to do this stuff. Um, you really don't. It's just a matter of are you smart? Can you can you read what what you need to on a certain play? Uh, but you need to know, know how to carry the football. Uh, Tark is definitely not a running quarterback, and it took him a little while to get used to um, carrying the football on a designed run. And what we ended up having our quarterbacks do, that we would make them go to with our running back individual with our running back coach to make sure that he knew what he was doing um, when it came down to him having to carry it. Coach, you talked a little bit about your uh, match and your coaching one time. Yep. So, the, the main thing, depending on the play, is that I tell our guy that is in the motion to never slow down. He is 100% full speed from the start, and it's the quarterback's job to time it up. And you'll see it, it, it happens all the time that, you know, if, if the ball were to hit the receiver or something, the next time he's going to slow down. We don't want that. I tell our guys all the time that it's the quarterback's fault that if the snap point is not right. And then the mesh point, all we teach is our quarterback is one shuffle. One shuffle to where the jet's going, because um, he's got to stay in the A-gap with our jet 
jet power stuff that we're doing because that's basically all we're doing out of this. And he needs to take one shuffle, arms extended, elbows extended, and he's aiming for the, for the stomach of the guy coming on the, on the jet. Why is not working on this one? So this this is an empty formation. We got three guys over here, two over here, our tailbacks over here. This is our jet replay. You can see this guy's in a four eye. We're reading the DN right here. Okay, our tackle is going to arc. We're reading the DN. He crashes already. It's a handoff um, to our tailback on the edge. Another thing that you got you got our wide receivers got to understand when we're doing this is how physical they got to be on the perimeter, and they got to have a mindset of when we do call these plays that it's crucial in their job to make this play successful by holding their block on the edge. So you can see here, Tark, he, he needs to stay right here in the A gap. He's getting a little too wide right here. Um, you know, maybe he knows that that's a four eye and he's going to slant, whatever. Um, but he needs to stay tight to hit inside of the puller. Coach, yep. are you guys reading the in man on the line of scrimmage or the first man outside of your in man and then you tag it if it's a four eye with the bear? Uh, if we get a bear, it, it, to be honest with you, in this game, we were reading the, reading the DN, the first hand out guy. Because we. We never saw him come into the box. And and if, if it ended up happening where he ends up coming and making the play, I'm not going to call that play anymore. I'm going to throw a bubble up there you know, to not allow him to come in and, and to have a factor in the play. And did your backside guard on your jet read and power read, is he always skip pulling? Yep. Yeah, to be honest with you, this kid, um, he, he wasn't wasn't our, the best uh, at getting around it and getting to where he needed to get to half the time this year. But um, we wanted we wanted him to turn and run. But to be honest with you, he couldn't do it. He he struggled with it. So we ended up allowing him to do what was, was most comfortable for him. Is he supposed to be blocking the read there? Is he? No, he ran right into him. I will tell him to not pass color. Yep. The so back there. Yep. That's more I squeeze it. What you use your hands to the bottom? You supposed to kind of uh, get around them? No, just uh, like, don't pass color. If you run, if somebody runs into you, you block. Yep. Don't pass somebody that runs into you. And then the other thing that we'll teach our quarterbacks is there's ever two off the edge. So coach, you know that answers. Also answer the question that if he's creeping up here and he's coming, the quarterback's going to keep it. Yep. Yep. So when you when you uh, if, if, if the DN and the read key go outside, then is that hard to turn off? Yep. Yep. And then we're uh, so what's going on here is that our double team is working here to that backer, and he should be pulling for the second backer in the box. Yep. This is a uh, fifth game, sixth game of the year here against uh, Whitewater, I believe. And this is a different way. Here again, this is one of our running backs. We put him in in our personnel grouping uh, at tight end here. And what we wanted to do is just to give them a different look to something they haven't seen. But you can see the amount of flowage that happens over the top here. Tark ends up, <coughs> excuse me, keeping it here. And this is third down. This is third and four, I think. Um, he does a great job. Hopefully we can get the tight out of here. Of staying tight. Staying tight to the A-gap. The, the big thing that quarterbacks are going to end up doing is taking two shuffles, and then they're too wide, and then they have to cut back into the A-gap of where we're trying to ask them um, to end up to begin with. Coach, you on your QB heels at five? Is that just at seven? Heels at five, yep. Toes at four. Um, so they have about four and a half in an ideal world. <coughs> Next. 
next clip here. Uh, this is again a Stevens point. And another thing that we're going to utilize is different blocking on the perimeter with how we're doing this. This is still the same read um, where we're going to read the front side D end. And then we have a tight end attached, like in the whitewater clip that you saw. He's going to go to the corner. We're going to crack here. And our running back, if he would have done this properly, it could have been an even bigger play. Um, he was slow looking inside. But he's designed to go with the safety here. So our wideout's coming in, cracking the backer. He's replacing him, picking up the corner. And then the tailback is going through and picking up the safety. Here again, our, our read is right, right here, C gap. He, and we teach our quarterback, um, if he works up the field at all, then or a mesh point, keep it here. Hard thought that he was going down inside um, to hand it off. But the thing we'd like to see better, obviously, is our running back is too slow uh, coming through here trying to get to the edge. If he would have been able to get to one of those guys, it could have been an even bigger play for us. How many different tanks do you guys have for your perimeter blocking on that whole game area? Um, would like to have uh, four, but this season this was the only one, only one that we utilized. Yep. Would that be communicated by the tight end and the split receiver, or is it game plan and that's how you're going to do it that way? Yeah, game plan and then it's in the play call. Yep, so they know in our jet read that it's the play call and then it's a tag attached to it. Um, that's with it. Yep. Uh, this, this one, I don't know why the tights only work, but. Um, this one is another empty set, and this is going into the boundary. So we'll utilize one of the field going into the boundary with this. It's not just a field, you know, jet read or boundary jet read. Uh, we're going to utilize both, go in both directions. Um, this play, honestly, if you guys are watching the whole line at all, I mean, who do we even block on this play? Feel like our right tackle is probably the only guy blocking somebody here. Um, and then anyway, we ended up getting eight yards on the play because um, we were able to get on the edge. The thing that our guards struggled with this whole year is they wanted to chase guys. They wanted to chase um, linebackers going out of the box. And that's, that's definitely an issue um, because he's going to be scraping over the top. Okay, and th this is going to be um, our home run hitter off of our jet read. Okay, and what this is, um, this is a big play for us. And what we ended up, we, we have the ability to use two wide receivers out here where they're both working on a crack post or just one. Um, the clips you're going to see is just one crack post. The tailback's going to be on the wheel, and then the guy on the jet ends up being your check down. So the guy coming through on your jet um, ends up going through and then just backpedaling out, waiting for the quarterback if he's got nothing to throw him the football. And then on the back side, we didn't throw this this whole year just because um, these were so open, but we'll run a curl and flat on the back side um, just to hold safeties in the corner um, away from the play. There we go. So the thing we'll do, I mean, you can't really tell unless you're a linebacker, is we're going to cheat our tailback out wide. He's going to take two steps wider than he normally does so he can get going um, on the wheel. As you can see, we ran it up with Brian in the game. That there he goes. That's who we're reading right there. He left. The thing I'll tell Tart, okay, you're reading the safety on the hash. If he goes, then you need to peek at where the corner is. You can see he comes through, ends up squaring up. He's the check down. The back is on the wheel. <coughs> so 
So the protection of it is going to be the same. Now we're going to have our guard pull and kick out the DM. It's the same, same play. Uh, it looks the same other than the guard is going to block the read. If we were to run our jet read, he's going and kicking out uh, the DM on it. But it's the same blocking scheme as the run play, just for guards going and just kicking out the DM. Next one here, this one, um, this was the third game of the season, our tight end here, we'll get to his protection here in a second, um, what he needs to do, but here again, you can, you, now it's really obvious, you can see where his split is, right, of um, him getting out, getting going. Um, Hart does a good job of feeling that guy coming, which he shouldn't be coming at all. I did. Um, should have had it picked up, but he didn't. And Hart got it out quick, got it to the running back, able to get it down in, into the red zone. Like I said, so the landmark um, for our guys is they're going to crack and then get vertical between the numbers in the hash. If it's middle of the field um, open, they're going to meaning there's going to be two high safeties. They're going to work to the hash. If it's a one high safety, they're going to work to two yards outside the hash. Okay, moving on to our quick game. Uh, this, this was a big, big uh, key to our success going to football this year. And why that's the case is when I first got the job the year before, they had given up 39 sacks. This year we gave up 11. Um, we had to utilize this to our advantage, our quick game, um, and get it out quick. The thing uh, that we, we do with our quick game is that we're going to break the field down the middle and it's going to be concept based. So we're going to have a one high side and a two high side, okay? And the quarterback is going to know based on the coverage. And um, like I said, it's my job to make sure that the quarterbacks know throughout the week of game plan um, and everything like that of where he needs to go based on the coverage. And you'll see uh, why concepts, I, I, I really, in my opinion, believe it's quarterback friendly. Um, you know, you can teach a young quarterback to get up the line of scrimmage. You've got a two high on the left, one on the right. You teach them to put two fingers down to their side. And when they get out there, is there one safety in the middle? Okay, you're going to the right. Um, and we can do these out of multiple formations. And the unique thing is we can do them um, out of, you know, an empty set or two by two, however we're going to do it. But, um, the defense is going to prepare for multiple concepts rather than, um, you know, just the one concept that we're going to practice. This is a big uh, route concept that we use, and that it's uh, more or less an all-purpose concept for us. This receiver right here, if he has anybody inside of him, he's going to take one step and then attack the inside shoulder of the man inside. If he has anybody head up on him, he's going to run a three-step slant. Um, and all he's trying to do, we ended up, there's a clip on here, hopefully we can see it, against Oshkosh, that we threw it to him one time. Highly ever do we throw it to the inside guy because his job is to open up the outside route. This is five and in, a drive route by the outside guy um, trying to throw the corner by with what we're doing. So our concept, there's going to be one up top here, down here. This was our best wide receiver this year, Joel Oxton from Lakeville. Um, we're going to teach them to outside release and then to throw the corner by. Staying. The thing that he does here at the end that we try to teach them not to do is to stay right on the line, not to drift. Don't allow the corner to come back into the play and bat the football down, um, but to stay tight. 
You can see here, uh, you know, Ryan has a guy inside of him, so he's going to take one step, bring those dudes with him, open it up for the guy on the outside here. Thing I'm telling the quarterback, uh, the target speed are a little jacked up here, but the catch, balance, and throw. Catch, balance, get your feet underneath you, be in good position, get the football out to the guy on the outside. Size then? Yep, yep. And the thing that I'll try to never do is do the same concept on each side. So we'll never do like gator gator, you know? Um, we'll try and do like the previous play and then Frito up top. Colt and then Frito. And that way he knows when he gets out there um, on which side of the field he needs to be working. Um, and there's always man beaters built into it. Yep. So this one we're getting zero. Um, here again, this is Demo Water right here. This is our tailback. He's running a five yard out. And then Tarek New, we're getting zero. Get it out quick, lay it out there. Guy ends up making a heck of a catch here. If you're watching the protection. A right tackle almost got our quarterback killed. But this is our one high side, this is our two high side. This is a concept that we're not talking about today, but he's going to work in, work back out, and then vertical on the outside. Number two beer. 
So this one is very similar to um, Colt. This one is Bronco. This is going to be both work at five and in. So rather than the one-step slant, we built this one off of that, where they're both going to be running um, five and in. And now we're going to read the guy over in between um, two and three. So if there's a guy right in here, we're going to throw it to him. Or you can see Whitewater um, here they're playing cover four, playing off. All we're going to tell Tar to do, catch, balance, throw it to the outside. The other, the other thing that we do in our um, in our quick game, you can see since it's all concept based and it's all based off the two by two concepts for our pass game, is that we'll just attach a number to it. So it's, if it's in a three by one and we attach a number one or a number three, um, that's just going to tell him to run a clear route. So what you see here, um, we're running our double in concept and then we're clearing out with the number three. Reading the guy over number two or in between two and one. Um, if he vacates, get our guy the ball. Coach, is that slide protection? Say that again. Three years this slide. Yep, quick game. Yep. Short set to the call. Uh, running backs going out. So so this is now in our three by one quick game. Um, very similar. I know a lot of you probably run this. Something similar to this, this is um, off of our stick concept. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to have outside guy, number one, run a vertical route, and then uh, two and three are going to run hitches. Number two is going to turn to the inside, three is turning to the outside to keep any guy inside of him on his back. We have the running back come out here, get the tight end in, try to jet to get guys to roll. Here with the quarterback's feet. If you guys are wondering that, just a quick three on this um, to allow the, the routes to develop. And here again, we're going to read the guy between two and three on this. If he goes to number number two, hitting it on the outside upfield shoulder um, to, the, to the route that we're throwing to. Then on the back side, um, are you using your the guy you're running against that landmark to that? Six yards. Six yards, yep. I don't want them to have to count steps when they're running their routes. Yep. Then on the back side, we're going to attach a five yard out. And if he gets pressed, turns into a, um, a conversion to a vertical. Yep. And that's the first thing our quarterback will look at in a three by one is if do they have the route on the back side. Here they had a safety on the hash, park was off of it, um, no matter what. Here against Platteville, where we had to in this game, we ended up throwing for 535 yards and a school record, um, 66 attempts. And um, we ended up getting empty because they were only rushing three majority of the time. So we had enough time in, in the pocket to throw a lot of the game. Here, Joel ends up tripping on this. We'd like to see him stick it and stay square so the quarterback doesn't have to guess where he's going to be. His landmark, he's going to come off the football at an angle uh, at six yards, same depth as this guy. The thing that we struggled with when I first got here is they were both running two straight up the field. They were right on top of each other. We could never throw it to the number two receiver because he was in the way. Have to angle him coming off the line of scrimmage. Another 
on here and ended up throwing it to the same guy. The thing, the thing that we don't do here, um, right here as you can see, we want them, it's a MOR, mandatory outside release on this corner because we need to ensure that he's not going to come back and just smack us the moment that we catch it. Uh, this is one that, uh, that we used a couple times this season. This is off of our uh, zone read play from when our running back is in the dot. And we're going to read the safety on the hash on this. Um, this was a play that we ran all the time um, at NIU and had a lot of success with it. All we're doing is this is our zone read. We're going to tag an extra on it. So over here again, we're going to block the read to ensure our protection. And then all we're doing is reading this guy right here. If he stays, pats his feet, doesn't come down at all, we're handing the football off. It's an automatic gift. If he comes down at all, the quarterback's going to pull it, come out, throw it to the receiver. And as you can see, he's running on his third outside step, um, planting and getting to the hash. And what we're telling the quarterback, is you can see here, um, our running back's coming on the right side. He's going to turn, get his uh, shoulders down, ride the fake while looking at the safety here, and then pop up and throw it um, to our wide out on the perimeter. Same kid running the route, same formation, same thing. Reading this guy right here again, he comes down, he vacates it all, putting it on him. And the thing, thing that our guys struggled with right away was they wanted to lead him down the field. Um, this is designed to just put it on him. Get it to this guy as fast as you can after you know that safety's coming down, put it on him, don't lead him. This was one, uh, you know, when you come in on, on Sunday and you watch this one, I wish Sam would have stayed more vertical after he got his release. You know, he started working to the hash too quick um, and allowed the corner to recover rather than staying high and having a chance um, of getting up the field and not bending it so much. Coach, that's all split zone. Yep, yep. Yeah. Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. You tag that, or you just not worry about guys being down for you? <laughs> oh, great question. Uh, we tag it. Yep. And um, we hope that they don't call it downfield. To be honest with you, I mean, unless I've I've seen it called one time, and it was because uh, the official turned around and he bumped into the whole lineman, and they looked at each other. I mean. You try to tell them, Tark's gonna, and to be honest with you, you know, and I know I'm joking, but we give a flash call. This is called flash in our offense. We'll tag X flash, and he, he goes up to the line, hey, flash, 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 and they know, okay, there's an opportunity that we might throw it here. Don't work downfield if you don't have to. So, yeah. Bubble series, this is another jet. Jets and bubbles in our offense are a huge deal. Um, you know, I know the RPOs are taking over the country right now, um, but we're going to have a pre-snap. Um, pre-snap also plays uh, turn into triple options in our offense. And a big thing that I don't want to ever overcomplicate this um, for our quarterbacks, if they can get five yards um, before they get tackled, then they need to throw it. They need to be long handoffs. As you can see, we'll do it out of a two by two and a three by one. And what we're gonna tell our outside guy, you got the corner, and then if it's a three by one, number two, you got most dangerous. And this is just attached to any play. So if this is, if it's a true bubble, that's gonna be pre snap for us. And we want our guy catching the football to get on the perimeter, to get to the outside, get outside all of the blocks. Great film job here, but
Here again. Got off. I think we can get, you know, the thing people will say, okay, is he three yards inside? Is he two yards here? Is he that? I don't want our quarterback to have to think that much. Can he get five yards before he gets tackled? Everybody knows a five-yard run play is a good play. Um, that's why I tell our guys that make sure if he can get five yards, throw it to him. And then your outside guy out on the edge has got to be um, setting the tone with holding his block. Wide receiver on the outside, is he blocking from the sideline or is he going to go square? Square him up. Yep. Yep. Just because he doesn't know where the guy's in. <laughs> Next, trying to try to get it in here real quick. Um, we're going to attach an Oki to what we're doing. Um, and what that is is a five yard out. So if we've got a run play, we got a bubble screen to our right, and our one on one on the back side, like I told you, is going to run a five yard out. First thing our quarterbacks will look at if it's a run play or a pass play, do I have my five yard out? If I do, I'm going to take it. Now you can see the down distance here. Your old line coach might want to fight you sometimes when you call these. Um, it's third and one right now, and we threw it. I tell our quarterbacks that if it, if it is third down and you're going to throw these, you better be sure um, that you're going to complete it. Otherwise, you're going to make us both look pretty dang bad. Here again, um, Ryan ended up not running the bubble here. But if, if he's pressed at five, like I said, he's going to run a, a vertical. Turns right into it. Rather than run the five yard out, we're not going to beat our head against the wall. We're just going to tell them to run a conversion route. Lay it up there. Questions at all? We weren't able to get into the drop back stuff, but. Good. Well, I'll be sticking around for a while. If anybody's got questions, please feel free to do so. Um, also, I know so Coach Schmidt has been in, in touch with some of you guys about the roundtable discussion uh, that we're going to try and start February 2nd, Wednesday night. Um, you know, we want to meet with you guys and, and learn what you guys are doing leadership-wise, practice-wise, all that sort of stuff. So um, thank you, and uh, thanks for coming.